when you heard that the, the Russians were allying with the Americans, like, did people think that wasn't a good idea, or like... I didn't like it, I'll tell you. Because at one time, that was our enemy. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, because they, uh, they signed up with the Germans. First. And the Italians, yeah. And then Hitler turned on them, and they didn't have nowhere else to go. So... And we needed an ally, so... Uh, well, that was what, what like, like, uh, what's his name, over in England, he says, he says, is he, uh... Churchill? Churchill, yeah, he says, they took the lesser of the two evils. Yeah. And Apparently, he, Stalin killed 40 million people. Of his own people. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he Siberia, was, All the gulags and the all Siberian the, oh, prison yeah. camps and stuff like that. I'm not saying what Hitler did was good, because it was awful, but Hitler killed, or, um, Hitler killed about 11 million, and Stalin killed, like, two, three times as much. Oh, which man, is just, man. it's just too it's much It's weird death. that we chose him to ally with. And, uh, War on two is, fronts. Yeah, well, that was, that was the thing that... We had to have an ally. Yeah, and it, it helped because it was also on the West instead of war on two fronts. It needed to be a war on two fronts. Yeah. That's what Hitler was afraid of. He yeah. didn't want the war on two fronts. Well, that's what happened with them last in the first World War One. Yeah. Like, that's surrounded. why he didn't want that to happen. Because he knew what happened in World War One, so he tried to ally with the Russians, but then he turned for some reason. That was dumb. Like, yeah, I don't know... He did a lot. We watch a lot of the history show stuff, oh, yeah. and it talks about how he just does stupid stuff. He's like, "We'll do this," and then his uh, advisors are like, "I wouldn't recommend that." And he's like, "You're fired," and he fires them, and then he oh, does yeah. things his own way. <laughs> I mean, like, I think they said around 1944 he took full command of oh, yeah. oh full command of, of the, the army, army, and oh, he yeah. he was, and I think it was when they were in Stalingrad. Or whatever. I can't yeah. remember what year it was in. The but soldiers he took were... Full, that's when he took full command of the army. So he was commanding on what rations, what soldiers, what supplies. the soldiers what were everything. begging to retreat out of Stalingrad because they were getting Ooh, crushed. Yeah. And he said, no, die. Fight and die. So then he took command of what goes in and out of Stalingrad. From everything from food to soldiers. And, there were and it's like, like nine, doesn't, he doesn't know anything there about There were that. like nine survivors. Which, um... They said they were driving by in a car, and they were in a box car, and he was in, like, their, his luxurious train, and he looked over, and he pulled the blinds down. Yeah, he pulled they the were just blinds sitting, down, he was eating steak. Yeah, and, and he was, stuff. and there were, there were nine people over there he that said, survived the bloodiest battle on the Germans. Their, mm -hmm. Of their side. It was like Stalingrad was a slaughter fest, and he said they should have died He said the country. He said they should have turned the guns on each other and shot each other. <laughs> rather than, he said, rather, than, rather than return, they should have killed each other. Well, that's that was the that was the Japanese thing too. They, oh yeah, they, they, they suicide, honor, suicide, yeah. honor killings. But the ones that, that did surrender, they found out that it wasn't that bad. You know, being being a prisoner was a hell of a lot better. Than, <laughs> With their well, because they were indoctrinated to oh, think yeah. that they would be like... Well, I mean, in, it's the, the Japanese thought Americans were literally the devil. So they thought... They thought they like, were going to, like, turn them inside out. <laughs> but in reality, it's like, you're just in prison. Like, it's, yeah. yeah. They're getting good food. Yeah. And they're, they're getting a place to sleep. Yeah. You take... Now, that's one reason why the, the atomic bomb... We, we dropped it on Hiroshima and Nagasaki because try, trying to... A direct invasion would have been a slaughter fest. Oh, yeah. It would have it been yeah. awful. It would, we would lose a lot of people. So would they. And so would oh, they. I so mean, because you look at the Battle of Iwo Jima and how 3,000 civilians killed themselves. They jumped to their death they didn't over the cliff. Be. See, I had, a, I had a cousin from Toledo, Ohio. He was... He was uh, a Marine, and he was on the Torara. He was the survivor of Torara and some of the other islands. And uh, but he used to look down on me because I was in the army. 
And I, he was, in other words, he was better than me. Yeah, Marines will do that. But, yeah, and that was, he was a... Take that off. You can keep going. You can keep going. It's, Whenever it's he good. left uh, here, he I'll had the... He had the thought that I was uh, equal to him. He, in other words, he changed his mind. He found out that uh, we... Uh, It does not have a battery low signature. The Marines weren't all that great. In other words, we were equal to them. Yeah. They always looked down at, them, at us. He looked down at, at me, you know. But he found out, even my other buddy from uh, Toledo, Ohio, uh, Glenn Bryce. Glenn Bryce, he went and, uh, he went and, uh, he was in the infantry, and he took him, uh, when he was in the infantry, he was fighting uh, the tough parts of the war, by like hitting the Normandy and stuff. And he found out my, my, George took him also he, as an equal. <laughs> he found out that just Marines just, they're not the only ones. Matter yeah. of fact, if they if they go into battle and they don't have enough men, that's their own fault. Yeah. I mean, in other words, they didn't have enough uh, backing them up. So you gotta have you gotta have the equipment and everything going. So you did think the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki were necessary? I I do I do because I think it saved a lot of their lives. Yeah, and they, I, they I did hear. Lot, they lost a lot uh, on the, on, when them two bombs fell. I never knew, but I did hear that the Americans dropped leaflets that said, we are going to bomb one of these cities, and they put like a list. And they said, if you live in one of these cities, leave. The they said, out. we don't want because to kill appar you. Apparently they did evacuate a lot of children. They did. They got a lot of people out, but, but not everyone. Everybody knows that the Japanese are stubborn, so I bet you some people didn't leave. Because they didn't think it was happening. And no. then when they bombed them, they were like, well, like, what do we do? Like, it's yeah. already dead. Now, that Marine I was telling you about, that George Herbach, he, uh, he survived at Tororo. And, but whenever he went to Jap, 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 he went to Japan, he was, uh, this one day, he was driving the colonel around, his uh, general around. He was, and the, German, the general wanted to see, well, that, that, that's the right time. Uh, hmm? Last time he was here, I think that thing was dead. Oh. <laughs> it's almost one. But he took an, uh, so he took the general. The general Texting wanted to go to Ground Zero at Hiroshima, and uh, my cousin George drove him down to Ground Zero. And but he, both of them, come down with with uh, <clears throat> radiation sickness, radiation sickness. Now when George come back. He had two daughters. Whenever he married my cousin, he had two daughters. Then, but he, after he after he come back, he was sterile. He couldn't. They, they couldn't have no more children. So, and eventually, and that that's what what killed him. You know. Wow. Yeah. He, but his general. Well, well, he wanted to go see. He wanted to go see where it happened, and he says he where it happened. But that was not too long, you know, after the, the armistice was signed. Right? After the it was like a started. day later. Yeah. Yeah. He was there, and he said it was actually still bad. You know, they they should have never went in there. Yeah. But he wanted to go in. And, uh, he was. Uh, Sterile the rest of the day, the rest of his life. 
And yeah, like I said, eventually it killed him. Yeah. No. So I'm, I was satisfied. Oh, I was getting ready to go over there. Really? Yeah, we was getting. I was down after the uh, Western Front. Yeah, after we we got done there, then they they separated us. All the all the officers and stuff that had a lot of points, combat points, they they came home. You know, they we came home right away. And uh, us poor bastards that had, didn't have uh, we had combat points, but not that much. And I still got discharged on combat points because I got I had all that combat time. And five five uh, major battles I was in, and, uh, including Normandy. So that's the whole thing. Uh, when I got out, I was waiting for a boat in Marseille. Marseille Harbor down in southern France. We had a big build up there, of guys getting ready to go home, go to, over to Japan. They was, we started, actually started doing some training to, to go to Japan, to fight over there. And uh, so when they dropped the bomb, well, that that released us. We, yeah. Pressure was off us. Then, uh, instead of getting ready for going into Japan, we started thinking about going home. So that was great. That was a that was the fastest I ever seen the army move. I went when we come home. Once we hit home, it was about about. Uh, About the third of third of January, we hit uh, Hampton Roads, Virginia. I was in a Liberty ship, and uh, <laughs> even that Liberty ship, I was uh, on a. I was on a, it was on about twenty twenty seven days coming across the ocean. Sometimes it was in a storm. Sometimes we only traveled three hundred miles. Or, Sometimes only 150 miles, just going up, bouncing around like a cork. Oh, man. Uh, you get oh, seasick? No, no, I don't get seasick. But my buddies did. Yeah. <laughs> they, they got sicker than a damn dog. Oh, they, and I, they was trying to put me on KP. Uh, I slept right in the kitchen. I mean, that was where, where my, you know, where, where my bunks was. We had like three, three high stacks going up. They had the 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 sea was so uh, tough that they had still about three quarter inch still uh, straps holding the tables down. <laughs> You had you sat didn't sit sit down eating. You stand well, we stood up eating. And you you get over to the table and you put your plate down and you have to wait. Over there you you're you're over this guy's food. For one minute and then you come over your earth, you shovel like hell, <laughs> and you get over here and there and you're over the next guy. <laughs> And you back over here, you know, <laughs> and that's how bad the, the, the storm was. And the, there was, as wide as the table was, there was a, a box that had all the condiments in it, the sugar, ketchup, mustard, stuff like that, all the salt, pepper. And the, as, as you, you go this way, that thing would go, do -do 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 -do. <laughs> You go back and go. Doo -doo 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 -doo. <laughs> I think I kept thinking to myself. I said, "Man, sooner or later, after that thing gets to the end, it's going to bounce off." And he had an edge on, you know, on the table, and it did. <laughs> but that's that's all the tables. They, then the damn straps that was holding the tables down, 
broke. And they were steel. I mean, big bolts and everything. And they they broke. Then they, the sailors come in, the merchant marines, they come in with big hosters, big, big, uh, big ropes, about that big around. And they had them holding the, tying the table down. And they, whenever they hold, um, tied the table down, then, then you had your, your, your plate, I mean your tray, and you're trying to get, get to the table. Excuse me. That's fine. Three ring Christopher. One more. Nice, that's all. Three ring Pittsburgh. There's some, some, somebody. They don't want to. They don't want you. To, they don't want to pick up the call. They get charged for that damn thing. If it goes to four rings, then they have to pay. Uh, but. Uh, Yeah, they, uh, that boat, now, that storm was so bad that I'd go to the fantail, back into the, and I'd hold on to the, hold on to the railing, and I'd lean way over, and you can, uh, uh, you could see the propellers, you know, and the, half the time, the propellers was out of the water. Water is dripping off the propellers. You can see they're just banner in the air. Then all of a sudden it goes down there. Then the water comes all the way up to where your feet is practically. Then all of a sudden it drops like a ton of bricks. It just falls away like a big cave. And you look over there, you can see them damn propellers coming out again. But that's the way it was all the way across. In Hampton, we finally got we and our we come through the Bermuda Triangle, and we damn near lost the propellers. <laughs> the curse is true. They, they got they got they got uh, loose, and boy, vibrate this ship would vibrate like hell. So finally, we limped up to Hampton Roads, Virginia, and that's where we got disembarked. We took them, and they took us off the ship. We carried all our bags and baggage off the ship, and they took us, put us in the barracks, and they marched us over to the mess hall. And you never seen so much food in all your life. Even ice cream, everything they had, everything what we call re upping food. <laughs> oh man, if you wanted steak, you got steak, no matter what you wanted. They, they ask you what you wanted, and you tell them what you, what you wanted, and as much as you wanted. That's awesome. Oh, yeah, re upping food, yeah. It was. Stuff that you didn't get overseas, and they had they had gallons of milk. Oh, and I loved that milk. It was <laughs> great. And they had hot coffee. They had everything. Uh, but uh, now on, see, I was on on board. I was on board the that um, Liberty ship during Christmas. And we had we had always lined up along the deck before it go down into the kitchen galley. And uh, as we went past the the Mer Merchant Marine part of the where their cabins were, they had a mess hall there. They were sitting there, and there was a guy. One of the merchant marines was sitting there with a fifth of whiskey and 
glass. The sheets man went by. <laughs> Merry Christmas. He's pouring out a shot of whiskey. I drank my whiskey. The same glass. We didn't, <laughs> there was no such thing as sanitary stuff back in them days. He's kicking. Uh, We'd, uh, we'd get our whiskey and we wish us a Merry Christmas. And even even on board that ship, uh, as small as it was, there was a, I was talking with a man there from Michigan. And I, he, I asked him what part of Michigan he was from. He said he was from uh, Bay City. Well, I had relatives up in Selkirk, Michigan, and uh, I got to talking with him, and he, he actually knew my relatives. It's, it's funny the way, way things, you think it's a small world, but it is. It's, my sister. Come on in. Hello. Come on in. I'm in. Oh, I'm sorry. No, you're fine. <laughs>